you're listening to the Creepcast on downrightcreepy.com. Now, here's your creepy host. On today's show, we have the writers and creators of the new Snapchat original animated series, Death Hacks, which you can get all 10 episodes now, and you can also see them on deathhacks.com, correct, guys? Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 I mean, deathhacks.com is just a pass through to the Snapchat, but yeah. Yeah, it's a good place, and you can actually watch it um, on, the, the, U- on uh, the Snapchat YouTube channel, too. If you, if you don't have Snapchat, you can watch uh, the first episode in the trailer there. Yeah. I highly suggest people looking at that, but you're definitely going to want to watch the rest of the episodes. They're easily uh, digestible, but welcome, uh, Aaron Augenblack. You're the creator of this and then writers, Katie Hannigan and Ryan Beck. Um, Happy to have you guys on to talk about this because I feel like, uh, you know, with such a fun bite-sized animated series and as quick and kind of quippy as it is, the writing really uh, needed to be great to bring this to life. So kudos on that. Um, it's something I, I very much would expect to see on Adult Swim. So <laughs> when I saw it on Snapchat, I was pleasantly surprised um, that it lived there. And I love the short form uh, that we're kind of getting into. And that's kind of why I brought up Adult Swim, because I'm used to seeing like 15 minute episodes there. Um, and, and something that feels like it fits in that world coming to Snapchat is cool. So my first question for Aaron as the creator, like where did this idea come from? And also, was short form your first um, pass at this? Was it something you thought it would be longer? Was this specifically for Snapchat? Uh, So, yeah, I mean, the Adult Swim thing is not by accident. I mean, uh, a lot of the shows that I've done in my career were Adult Swim shows. I I did the the show Super Jail uh, on Adult Swim. I recently did two seasons of the show The Jellies with Tyler, the creator, that was on Adult Swim. And, uh, yeah, I mean, we've always had kind of a late night uh, uh, vibe with the animation that we do. And, um, I had, it started, um, with just the idea of, uh, you know, I, 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 I thought it'd be really funny to parody, you know, uh, life hacks and, mm-hmm. and just that kind of youtube kind of culture. And then it was just the, the, the name death hacks, just it suddenly kind of wrote itself. You know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, just the idea of doing, I mean, I, I, immediately horror has always been my favorite genre of anything. I would probably honestly probably put it above animation because it's what I watch horror way more than I watch animation. So the idea of combining uh, horror and comedy and animation was just like really exciting. So, you know, the idea kind of, sprang that okay so if if it's like you know doing uh, a life hack show it's like a youtube show influencers like speaking from the grave you know what kind of world would that be and that's really where the id idea started and i put a pitch together i shopped it around to a couple places and then i heard that snap was was doing a lot of like you know uh putting a lot of uh um their their uh focus on animation and on entertainment in general so i talked to snap and uh they were just really uh, a really exciting place to talk to because you know i've done a lot of shows a lot of networks and you know sometimes it feels like you know they're just sort of grinding out the product a little bit Mm -hmm. and um as you know uh you know as an independent studio i always like experimenting and you know snap because they're i mean they're they're younger than i am you know what I mean? It's like <laughs> yeah. Snap's only 10 years old, you know, and my studio's 20. Yeah. So they're, they're ba- they basically had the vibe of like a startup and they're just experimenting with everything. And right away they were mm-hmm. like, we love the idea that this is like, this show would be like direct address. And it's like, you know, hitting all, like it's hitting on all of the um, um, things that pe- people are excited about on Snapchat, you know, mm-hmm. uh, fashion and food and pranks and all this stuff. They're like, it's like, it's kind of made for our audience. So lean into that. Like, don't make a show that could be on Adult Swim. Don't make a show that could be on Comedy Central. Make a show that could only be on your phone. Like, we want to make this completely a Snapchat show. So we totally leaned into that. So, yeah, so they just, they immediately had a really, um, 
great uh, um, drive towards experimenting and making a new kind of cartoon. So that's what was great. And then I'll lead it into to Ryan and Katie. Like you said, you know, okay, so you have this format, this weird format. Okay, we have two ghosts hosting a show about what it's like to be dead, right? But I knew that like the core of the show had to be, um, you know, solid. Like we had to have a, 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 like a, a, like a solid structure beneath all the wackiness and the horror and the gross out. So that's why I just, I, I, I was looking for, for just really, really funny, brilliant writers. Like the, these are, you know, people that, that know comedy and know character development. And, you know, I honestly, I'm big fans of both Ryan and Katie and, you know, talked to both of them and, early on, like our first conversations were immediately like really fruitful. Like I think we mm -hmm. came up with ideas for the show like right in the first like interviews we were doing, <laughs> you know what I mean? And uh, so like right away it was like, you know, you know, Brian's got this like these comedy chops of doing all these different like really funny bits for Comedy Central and then his uh, stand up and Katie, you know, has so much uh, experience with like, with the horror with she, I don't know if you know this Casey, but she she does a, a a like a apocalyptic podcast, uh, which is I didn't like know deep that. in the horror world, and uh, so she does all this horror stuff and all this horror mm -hmm. comedy. So right away, like the three of us got together, you know, bolstered by I have to mention, you know, because I want to hand it over to them for a yeah, yeah. But uh, you know, I'll, I have to say I also you know included my animators on our writing sessions, mm -hmm. which is really important cool. to me as an animator. They always get left out of the writers' room, always, yeah. always, always. So it was important to me. You know, my my animation director Katie went. Uh, my creative director Devin Clark were there in the meetings with us. So That's in cool. addition to all the character comedy and gags we were coming up with, we were also coming with the visuals at the same time. So yeah, so I so so yeah, so Ryan and Katie were just crucial to the comedy of the show. So I maybe I can let them. Thank you. <laughs> it's funny you brought up the animators because I actually found out about the show from David because um, I'm friends with him on on Facebook and he posted yeah. something about Death Tax and I saw the trailer and then I went and watched the first episode. So uh, yeah, I originally found out about it because of him. But for for Katie and Ryan, like when you guys were writing the show. Were you writing with with characters in mind? Like, did you do, like, for instance, Ryan, did you write for Adam and did Katie write for Molly or was it best idea wins type of thing? Well, I mean... Go ahead, Ryan. I was, yeah, sorry. I think uh, ultimately it was always the best idea that was going to win yeah. out. because, But we had such a uh, good team right away and I think we all got along right away and kind of knew what we wanted out of this. Um, and so, you know, the best joke was always the one that, roast to the top i mean there we i don't really feel like we had too many um contentious moments in the writer room at all it was always like yeah this except for that one time fun. no just <laughs> kidding no, we're going to talk about right now <laughs> no <I'm just> kidding. <laughs> well it was just it was a lot of fun and it was and i think having um devin and katie went in there um was so really important. helpful it was really helpful for us because like um you know i came from making uh content for Comedy Central and so I had a little like one foot into the um, you know making things for your phone kind of world mm -hmm. and Katie and I have known each other from stand-up for uh, almost a decade now mm -hmm. and um, so we had like jokes we had these characters in mind we understood like the type of people that would be on a, uh, like a life hacks show or like you know we knew influencers enough to parody them but when it came to like what was actually even possible uh, as far as animation goes, like they were a tremendous resource in, in Aaron steering the ship, like helped everything work together. That's cool. So, yeah. Yeah. I, uh, I'll just, I'll, I'll just piggyback on that just to say that like, you know, w w with the studio, you know, I've, the studio has been open for 21 years now. Mm -hmm. Collaborating is my favorite, favorite part of the entire job. I love to do it. It's the best part. And, you know, this was such a great writer's room because, I, and I'm really not just saying this, that like there was so much mutual respect there. And I think this is what Ryan was kind of saying was like, it was just always what's funniest. Like there was no hurt feelings. Like if you, if, you know, if I told a, a joke, if I had a gag and then, you know, Katie went up it, which she usually would, you know, I'd be like, great, let's do that. You know what I mean? Cause it's like, yeah. why be precious when we all like each other and we're all really funny. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. We all have good ideas. Especially yeah, with such a, really... a new medium. Right. 
Like, yeah, that, it was it was just fun every day. We were like having a riff session, you know. It was just like those are the best. <laughs> it was a delight, you know. It, it keeping that playful element, I think, is one of the reasons that the show is so good because you know mm. you you don't stay attached to anything and you just focus on that fun feeling. Yeah, it it's a ton of fun to watch, and like I said, with a short format, it makes it even better to just churn through those. You almost don't realize you're going in from one episode to the next. <laughs> in some ways, yeah. was this written by any chance in quarantine? I'm just <laughs> curious. I'm curious. Uh, you said writers' room, so I assume not. But I, I'm just curious about the process because we've seen kind of a rise of animated stuff yeah. in quarantine because that's a better process right now, safely. So I was just curious when I saw this. I'm like, well, it's, <laughs> it's short enough that maybe this idea came to fruition, but um, in quarantine. But I was just curious about the rise yeah, of that. Really made the bulk of it last year. At the very end of last year, we sort of finished uh, up. The post was like. The first we we kind of honestly finished it right when quarantine started. In fact, yeah. like we had to do ADR, you know, where you uh, we record, you know, extra dialogue, you know, a, a, after you've animated, just for mm -hmm. like you know, you know, audio purposes for for polish. And uh, Kristen Shaw and Thomas Middleditch and Adomian and Butera, they all had to do the, their ADR on their phones from their houses because huh. oh, wow. I had studios booked that you know <laughs> one by one the studios were like yeah we can't have human people in our booth anymore you know what i mean and i was like really is that what's happening wow. you forget how, how weird this whole thing was in the beginning where it was like well why <laughs> would you close your audio studio i don't understand so so yeah so we had to have them like we, we had our audio facility like give uh you know uh uh Middle so and, and, and Shaw like advice on not even kids. We were just like, oh, wow. you know, like, okay, go in your closet, make sure there's a lot of clothes mm -hmm. in there because it dampens the audio. Like it was like, it was that crazy. Man. Wow. Yeah. So we were just finishing as the quarantine was starting. In fact, there's, I'm happy to say there was only one joke we had to change due to the <laughs> quarantine. And we had a gag in there. Uh, I'm pretty sure Ryan wrote it where there's a, the last episodes at Kohella, which is hell's yeah. you know, the biggest music festival. And of course they have the ultimate afterlife super group, which I think was like Biggie, John Philip Sousa, uh, Bob Marley, like all these different people. And then we, I think the gag was uh, that, t and then little Timmy. Timmy. Yeah. But what was it to some, you guys probably he, remember than I He do. died. He showed a lot of promise before he died in fifth grade. <laughs> oh no. In the outbreak. In the school yeah. band. And they go, oh, man. you know, before the outbreak, right? Yeah. And we were like, yeah, let's. It's, it's funny that. that anything gets cut from, from content like this, right? Because it's all, <laughs> it's all, I mean, dealing with death. Uh, yeah. But yeah, I understand well, the nuances. Had, we had a little brainstorm session towards the end of the season of like next season type stuff. And I know that mm -hmm. one of the mm -hmm. concepts was viral videos, a real virus spreads. And it was like, yeah, yeah that's not that funny anymore. Oh, uh, that's too bad. <laughs> I mean, it would have been. But... It will be in a yeah. hundred years. <laughs> in season four, it will be. <laughs> uh, I mean, yeah, that's, that's something I was going to ask is, was there anything that hit the cutting room floor that you really love that maybe we'll see a sneak peek of into season two? Obviously, getting cut for COVID is one thing, but there was there ideas that you, you did love and nothing's precious, so you were able to let it go, but you're hoping that you can bring it back. There was a ton of ideas that, um, I mean, it's just really, once you, once we understood who Adam and Molly were and also their yeah. relationship to each other, which I think was like, for me, that was the most important thing about this yeah. show because like beyond that they're, um, you know, dead and that, uh, they're hosting this show. It's like, who are they and who are they to each other? Mm -hmm. Um, then we came up with backstories about how they died. And, you know, we have so much from like who these characters are now to pull from for future yeah. seasons. And I think as the audience grows and as people find out about the show and they watch them, that's the cool thing about it being short from you can watch all of them. And currently, I think you can watch all of them about, about a half hour. Yeah. Um, you know, we can get more in depth with it. Um, as far as things cut from season one that we want to bring back, I think it's mostly that we just really established who they are. And now we have mm -hmm. this great mine, this great well to go into. But like, my God, I know Katie can speak to this, but it's like some of our scripts came in at like eight, nine pages. And we're like, this got yeah. three minutes. Yeah. Like, like, <laughs> it's already like a fast out. pace. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it, it was going. There's two things, you know, I'd like to show that, you know, one is that, um, you know, 
Ryan, I touched on this, and I, I think it's really important because I, I, personally, it was like the breakthrough for me for the show, and what I think Ryan and Katie brought in such an exciting way really early on was this, who are these two characters, right? Because okay. as an animator, like I always go for the gross out gags and the horror stuff, and that's what I that's where I want to be. Like it's yeah. like, like a savory world, right? But what makes the show watchable and endearing in some ways is who are these two characters? Like who are they and why are they doing this show and why do they want to be famous and how do they feel about each other? And really early on, and it was a really exciting thing that happens when we were in the room and Ryan and Katie were there and we just started brainstorming like who they are. And we're like, oh, it's like, you know, Adam's like into like pranks and skateboarding and, you know, the more superficial stuff and like Molly likes fashion and, you know, mm -hmm. you always start sort of superficial and get deeper. And I remember it was, it was the moment when we were like, um, we're like, well, what if they, like one of them had a crush on the other, you know, like that would be kind of an interesting through line. And we're like, and I think I was like, oh, Molly would have a crush, you know, on, on Adam, you know, and I, I think it was Katie that was like, no, no, Adam has a crush on Molly. And it was like, yeah. yeah, that makes total sense. And that sort of defined their interaction from then on was that, you know, that everybody can relate to that. It's like they're best friends. He's got this unrequited crush. She's sort of like in her own zone, you know, mm -hmm. and like every episode has a touch of that. And I think it's what mm -hmm. really draws you in. Yeah, I, I would have um, loved to have seen the plot twist of her um, in love with the internet troll, but that's just me. <laughs> <laughs> They did go to prom together. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I like that, you know, every episode adds a little bit of layering to it. So you've really established that world, like you guys said, to, to jump off and expand into uh, even deeper stories for season two, as deep as you can go with, you know, six minute I, <laughs> type I, episodes. You know, I, I think we felt like we were really getting out there when we started to uh, make over the troll and just fill out his back door. <laughs> yeah. We're like, oh, we're yeah, rocking now. We're, we're here. We know what we're doing now. This is yeah. great. I, well, I also... Oh, go ahead. The second thing I was going to say was about like cutting room floor. You know, it's funny, like I'll say Snap's been great about yeah. like letting us do all kinds of really crazy stuff. I mean, it's a really weird show. Like they're kind <laughs> of, when, when I, at the end of it, I look back and I was like, what I'm most proud of is like, I don't know another show like it. I really don't mm -hmm. like format wise. And I watch a lot of shows. There's not really like most shows you go like, oh, it's kind of like The Office, but it's in space, you know, like whatever. <laughs> this one's right. like, really, it is a unique show. And like, to me, the closest precedent might be like Pee Wee's Playhouse or something, where you have oh, a yeah. really okay. weird character talking on the screen. You're but, dead. Uh, you just yell that at the beginning, like yeah. Pee Wee's house. <laughs> the chair <laughs> says, you're dead. It's the secret word of the day. Was that Hyperdrive that you were thinking of? The Office in Space? I love that of, show. A little. <laughs> yeah, that's a great one. There's a new uh, Paul Feig, Paul Feig uh, thing that came out, too. I can't remember what it's called right now, but it reminds me of that, too. But like the, the, the only the, the only the changes, the main changes that Snap was giving was honestly just being relatable to their audience. Because yeah. they're so securely very mm. young and Gen Z. And I'm pretty securely Gen X, right? <laughs> I think we're millennials, right? And it's like, we, I, would, I would be shocked when like, for example, like we did a bit where uh, uh, Adam, they're remembering bad dates they have. And Adam remembers a bad date he had with, Jigsaw from Saw, right? Mm -hmm. It was like, it was a thing about uh, being possessive. Oh, remember that time you dated Jigsaw? And it was like the joke, like Jigsaw's got him in a thing of being possessive, right? <laughs> and Snap was like, oh yeah, our audience has no idea who Jigsaw is. Yeah, right? I was like, Jigsaw? It's not even that crazy. long ago. And they're still yeah. making Saw films. You we were like, really? <laughs> that's not relatable. And then, so we turned it to Slender Man instead. It was like, okay, right. that, yeah. they know who Slender Man is. I had so just seen the, the 2020 of like the girl, like the three girls who have been I think they killed their friend. I forgot yeah. about it anyway. The documentary. Like, yeah. Yeah. yeah, whatever that was with Slender Man and like uh that's yeah. It's it a was... fun one. It's a fun one. <laughs> right. It's light. It's light <laughs> content for everyone <laughs> for this time of year. Well that was the fun thing. And I, I I'll say Katie brought a lot to that too. One of the things that Katie and I have in common is like we just love laughing at the darkest possible things. <laughs> love it. The biggest laughs we would get. And like you know, whenever we would get into like Lizzie Borden or like just these really dark things, it was yeah. awful we would laugh the most. Mm -hmm. And I would clutch my pearls and just go, oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> we like said some sinful things in that writer's room. We really did. <laughs> Aaron and Katie are like, uh, if I, and I say this in the highest compliment, a little sadistic in their humor. And, it's just, <laughs> and I, I, you know, I'm over here like not 
as big of a horror buff. Like I like it, but I legitimately get scared, so I can't handle it. <laughs> You're like a little bit of balance to There's the no conversation. Separation. Like I'm in, you know. Like I'm really like, oh my god, my family was murdered. That's how it feels when I watch this movie. <laughs> yeah. And and so like I would I would just like okay, let me absorb what they what they're saying and and just let them figure this one out. While I I, that was something about breath. Adam, the character of Adam, that he had this like streak mm -hmm. of innocence that was like mm -hmm. very um, charming about him that I felt like was a gift right. from you, where he was this <laughs> sweet, yeah. sweet boy. That's <laughs> true. Yeah, whereas Molly was more sophisticated, which I think came yeah. a lot from Katie. It's funny that they didn't get the the Jigsaw reference with Spiral coming out next next year, which is part of the Saw franchise. So maybe they'll be reintroduced to that and we can actually have a Jigsaw joke in season two. Yeah, I mean, it reminds me, <laughs> um, I, I worked at MTV briefly and like, uh, you know, there's the half-life on pop culture at places like MTV and Snapchat is like the last like three minutes. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. Like it's yeah. What happened last year, basically. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. How did you get, um, you know, Thomas and, and Kristen uh, attached to this project? Did you have them in mind? What and how receptive to were they to the idea? Because I feel like James's internet troll is like perfect. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I just like, yeah, of course, James and Domian's the internet troll. When I when I saw that, because I didn't know the first couple times I saw him, and then I went back and I was like, oh, okay, uh, James is playing that character. But how did you get Thomas and Kristen involved with it? Did you pitch them or were you, did you work with them before? How'd that, how'd that uh, pan out? I, did I work with Kristen before? I, I don't think I did. I knew Kristen be, just from being in New York and there was uh, kind of a weird overlap. There was a point, I did the show Ugly Americans, uh, mm -hmm. also a horror comedy. And there was a point when there was sort of an overlap between Ugly Americans and Bob's Burgers. Like we had some similar <laughs> cast members, and there was actually a, a flight that we all the, the cast the cast and crew of Ugly Americans and Bob's Burgers took a flight together to Comic Con one year. <laughs> yeah, so I, that makes sense. I, I, I had lunch with Kristen then, so I'd known her from that that world a little bit. But um, I hadn't worked with Thomas. It was you know we just you know went out to the best people we we knew yeah. of. You know we actually honestly because of the schedule was so tight on the project. We did uh, scratch track for ever, all 10 episodes with Ryan and Katie as Adam and Molly. Oh, nice. And by the way, it's really good too. Like, it's great. Like, do we get to see that? Is that going to be on deathhacks.com? Yeah. Uh, you know, That'll uh, be the blueprint. Uh, Ryan's like, nope. <laughs> but, uh, but like, it's really funny too. So we actually, we cut all the episodes with those two and they sort of set the pace in. That's awesome. I mean, so that was actually really, really helpful. It sort of, it, it laid the groundwork for the vibe of, of the show. And then we brought them in towards the end, you know, what, and that was kind of the beginning of this year. We brought them in and then they brought in their magic. Obviously, Kristen Schaal and, and Thomas Middleditch are, are brilliant and super funny. But it's so interesting. Funny. They brought their own vibe to it too. And it, it's funny because, you know, with Ryan and Katie, I feel like, there was this, like Ryan had this kind of innocence to Adam, you know, this kind of Charlie Brown quality. And Katie brought this, uh, you know, really kind of smart, you know, really cool, you know, coolness to Molly. And then when, when Thomas and Kristen did it, they almost brought it in the other direction. Whereas Kristen Shaw was just so naturally sweet that she kind of gave this sweetness to Molly and Thomas had this weird edge to him that he mm -hmm. gave this strange edge to Adam. So it was, it's interesting. It found like a zone in the middle that I think came out just like magical. Yeah. Whenever I think of Thomas, uh, I think it's because of Silicon Valley. You get that yeah. kind of anxiety ridden kind of <laughs> angsty it's, thing about it. It's not it and, like that at all. Right. He's but like from a, really a confident dude. From like the fast pace perspective of how quick the show is and kind of jabby, it feels like it was like perfect for that type of. Yeah, they were great. And and by the way, Domian that... and Butera are brilliant. Yeah. Like yeah. Domian, they've, they're both my go-to uh, you know, voice actors in everything I do. They pretty much both of them have been almost. Fantastic. I love they, James. You know yeah. that they played every character that was not Adam and Molly. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And by the way, Ryan did the, the narrator, which is awesome too. Yeah. I say, yeah. I, you mentioned Comic Con, and that that brought up something that I, I first of all, I just I miss experiences, you guys. I don't know. It's uh, in general, I miss going to festivals and conventions, and we do that a film fest. Bum me out so much. I miss experiences. <laughs> <laughs> I miss life uh, in general. But uh, the reason I say that is because when I saw um, 
uh, the hell tell. I was like, man, this feels like a Comic Con experience. Yeah, like that's Airbnb fun. waiting to happen, like an Airbnb death hex, and then at night you have a rave grave party, like yeah. afterwards. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I'd love to see that. And then as we world build uh, with these characters, uh, like doing Funko vinyl figures of uh, Adam and Molly <laughs> and Internet Troll and Doctor Kill and <laughs> all these yeah. all these characters doing little like Kid Robot needs to get on that right now and Snapchat. Uh, yeah. This is the advertising marketing person of me. Yeah. Whenever I look at stuff like this, I'm like, I want to own this or I want to yeah. see this happen. Uh, if anybody makes figures and get in contact with me, email, email me through the website. I, we <laughs> we got the I gifts. want stalls of Adam and Molly. When Aaron showed us the gifts, I was over the moon. I was like, this yeah, is the, the gifts coolest were thing really ever. Yeah. Cool. The gifts are really cool. Instagram gifts, Facebook uh -huh. gifts, and uh, what else is it on Snap, obviously? Snap, yeah. yeah. You can put it on there. Yeah, yeah. It was really cool. I think it, I think it was on Twitter at one point, or I'm not sure. Yeah, you can. maybe it was like Giphy or something on Twitter. Yeah, on Giphy. Yeah. If you, if you search Death Hacks on Giphy, it'll come up everywhere. They're very cool. They're I'm very friends cool. with uh, Matt L. That's a designer for Kid Robot because he's actually here oh, yeah. where I'm at. So I'll hit him up and be like, Yeah, you know, guys, and make Snap, build right. some figures for us. Yeah, yeah. get on the team. <laughs> with uh, with Kohella, like. It's funny, like th this is all like it was. It was kind of interesting because when we did make a pilot, and yeah. the pilot was kind of like it, it almost behaves as like a trailer for everything else we were going to do. It's kind of them just explaining their world, saying like you're dead. This is what's going on in hell. There's like hell and heaven, and <laughs> it's gross out food and like you know setting into place. Like so, if you watch the first episode, it's kind of our like teaser episode, and just when you know ryan and katie and, and and devin and katie and i were brainstorming we came up with most of the episodes in that first episode because that was when we were like oh they should have like kohella and like all these different like oh it'd be really fun if they could go to heaven and hell and oh heaven would be like super lame <laughs> that's where your grandparents are but hell's like rocking and like and that was like a lot of the ideas came in that it was like literally first week we brainstormed like yeah. heaven is facebook where all your grandparents <laughs> 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 it's it's true. Um, I, I did want to bring up uh, kind of staying on the, the topic of death. Uh, let's talk about uh, horror in general for a second. So I want to hear from you guys. If you were to come back to life as a zombie and you got <laughs> bit and you're coming back, who would you bite first and why? I mean, I, I, I have an idea um, that I, I mean, I just think that this is a lot of a lot of um, hypothetical that I'm going to be sentient enough as a zombie to be like searching <laughs> around to find somebody to eat. It's like I'm going to eat the first person, probably my boyfriend, you know, and I don't want to do that. But... I like that you brought logistics into a zombie conversation, <laughs> but oh, you're completely always. right. You're you're right. That is something. I will have a four hour conversation about zombie logistics. <laughs> yes. yes, we love zombies. Yeah, that was exactly my thought was like, this is definitely, uh, do I, do I know that I'm a zombie? Right. Because then I can maybe like pick who I would want to bite and would it be someone that I like? I'd have to reason. Would it be someone I want to be, you know, co-zombies with, or is it someone that I want to punish and, and make them eat their whole family? You'd yeah. probably bite your dog, you know? I mean, yeah, I mean, I probably would end That's up biting bad. my dog. I wouldn't want to. Um, she is cute though. She's very she's delicious. Cute. And she runs I want to bite her now. Also, <laughs> she, like anytime I get a scratch or something, she always will come over and start licking it. And like, she's already. <laughs> That's it. Boom. She's already turning. That's how yeah. it gets in. Is this normal? Do dogs like blood or is mine have like a real obsession with us? Yeah. Mine does. Mine does that. If dogs I ever have tongues a cut. can be healing. Is that true? I don't know. I always like say <laughs> random facts. You guys know that about I, me. I yeah. have heard that, but I feel like have like, you? Okay, good. They have bacteria sure. all over yeah. them, right? Like they're licking their butts. Like, why would the open wound? How does that heal? But a dog's mouth is much cleaner than a human's mouth. Again, that doesn't I have no look. That people say that all the time. Katie. It doesn't that. mean that a dog's mouth is clean. It just means that <laughs> our mouths also have bacteria. <laughs> yeah. We just, don't lick our butts. They're not just full Speak of for yourself in there. <laughs> yeah, it's still a mouth. Still a mouth. It's uh, that sh sh we should get that on a shirt. It's, it's still, still a mouth. mouth. It's still a mouth. <laughs> no context is even better. <laughs> my my instinct was uh, Mario Patali. Okay. <laughs> I feel like he would be delicious and also Absolutely. worthy of, of massacring and murdering. And, and then if he's like, "Why did you bite me?" You could say, "Well, you had it coming." 
You had a couple. Oh. <laughs> Just for the, the crops alone. Yeah. <laughs> From us, I feel like the, the fact that we've discussed this now, it's in our heads. So if we ever do turn to a zombie, uh, whatever answers we give in, it'll just subconsciously happen. So unfortunately, your dog's a goner and your boyfriend's a goner, but that's uh, okay. Well, he'll be with me. I, I, he wouldn't want to be a human while I was a zombie. That's a good point. I, I, I'll project yeah. that onto him. <laughs> it becomes a romance, a romantic uh, zombie comedy. Yes. <laughs> um, Can I a question, Casey? Yeah. Is, are vampires zombies? Oh boy! I, was just I mean, no. About the fact that it's really desirable to be a vampire because you want yeah. to fit and become a vampire, right? But it's not desirable to become a zombie. But it is. It is, you know, eternal life. So why is that not desirable? Yeah, because you've got eternal life for both in some ways. Yeah. But one, you're actually conscious and can make right. decisions and right. live a life. Do um, you want to be conscious? Is that a thing oh, we want? Here's anymore? the real deal. This is what it is. It's about vanity. These zombies, yes. you're they're ugly. rotting off. When you're a vampire, you literally look sexier. Like you look sexier. You got, but you can't see it in the mirror. No, you I can't I just rewatched The Omega Man. Have you guys seen that, The yeah. Omega Man? I haven't. That's, that's like one of the, the – what was that book um, that it was written after? Last that Man on Earth. The Last, Last Man, Man on Earth. Earth. Oh, yeah. yeah. It was like that was the crossover point between vampires and zombies. Yeah, that movie right there, where it was like and they were kind the, of like sick and they became vampires, but then yeah. that's like what inspired the Night of the Living Dead. Katie, have you seen what? the the Vincent Price Last Man on Earth? Um, I that, no, I haven't seen that. It's one. It's really good. That's it's the not, one I know of. Actually, that book that book made me cry, and I don't cry. The dog <laughs> thing is heavy. It is heavy. It is. Yeah, it is I, I read. Bad. I read the book. No, Matheson, I didn't. Right? I'm confused. I'm confused. What, 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 what was the one, the Will Smith movie? That's, I think oh, it all stems from the same. Legend. Thing. I read yep. Legend, I am which, legend. Yeah. yeah, which is like really close to, yeah. but yeah, the dog thing is like sad. But that was Tim, Tim Matheson. Is that his name? Matheson. He wrote uh, all the best Twilight Zones. Oh yeah. oh yeah, I love those old ones. I love them. They're free. Murder, Murder at a Thousand Feet was his too. Yeah. yeah. Right. I, I really uh, enjoy the vampire versus werewolf, uh, what we do in the shadows. Um, yeah. <laughs> it, it's when funny. we're putting vampires against someone, um, so far that's been my, my favorite I matchup. Saw, I, I saw the movie, you know, when it came out. Love but I hadn't seen the show until after we made Death Hacks. Yeah. And, and I was like, oh my God, it's the same sense of humor. Like, it's the same. Like, they not nailed it. In a bad way. You know, like, I was like, oh, this is great. Like, they're, they're doing, this is just what I love to see. It's so funny. I yeah, they it. nailed that. We actually were lucky enough at our Film Fest Panic Fest, we did the North American debut of What We Do in the Shadows cool. uh, wow. in 2013, 2014. And we didn't realize, you know, what that was going to turn into. And it's been a blast to see it kind of evolve into different um areas but we have the christian uh, shawl crossover she was on uh, what we do in the shadows <laughs> yep there's a it's like and a six way, degree hates she hates horror oh so really i asked her because she's in last man on earth and yeah the, and I, so people put her in horror stuff i was like oh you must really like shawl she's like i hate horror oh uh, that's <laughs> funny <laughs> i mean she's like, well, she's like, i get too scared i can't watch it well death axe uh, it's more her her speed i feel like yeah so is there any word on season two you said you're you're working on that now do we know when it'll be released and then uh, i would i know it's short form but i'd still love to see some sort of long form come out of this at some point uh where the world building um comes to life in a long form piece is there any plans for that and what can we expect do a from snapchat season? movie that's like 25 minutes <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> A live, a live event. <laughs> There's actually no word on second season yet. That's okay. Up to, that's up to Snap to decide. So if you love the show, uh, I guess, I don't know, Snap, Snap, <laughs> and let them know. <laughs> yeah. Because uh, we'd love to make more, for sure. It was so fun. Um, so we'll see. I would love to make more. We, the, we brainstormed a lot of ideas for more seasons. And whatever form it takes, I hope we get to, to get to make more, whether it's Snapchat or somewhere else. We'll see. We'll see. Because... I'd love to keep making it. I had so much fun. Yeah, I'd, I'd love to see some more of it. Um, uh, everyone should check that out. It's on Snapchat now. You got all 10 episodes. You can go to deathhacks.com uh, to learn a, bit, a little bit more and then push you over to Snapchat. But yeah, please share that if you enjoyed it as much as I did. And I really and appreciate it. subscribe to it. Yeah. Subscribe to it, yes. It costs you nothing. It's free no. to get the button. 
get over there, check it out. Death Hacks. I loved it. Uh, thanks so much for joining me and taking the time to talk about it today. And I'll cross my fingers for a season two and some vinyl toys. Awesome. Hey. Thanks so much, Casey. We yes, love thank the you, cast. Casey. All right. We'll talk to you soon. Awesome. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Listening to a downright creepy original on the Crickets Podcast Network.